Hi, this is Maria Langer, and I have thrown together a video to explain how to load the Bob 423 tracks for the ICW from the website where he keeps them into a GPS, into a chart plotter. Um, I'm using a Garmin GPS map 7612, I think. And uh, so anything uh, newer than that should, the instructions should be very similar. Anything slightly older than that, it should be similar as well. Um, the first stuff I do though will be the same no matter uh, what kind of chart plotter you've got. Um, so I'm starting off on the Bob 432 ICW Tracks and Routes page and you can see the address for that up at the top here of my screen. Um, I will also put that into the notes that go with this video. And I am going to download uh, long tracks, uh, although I'm not going to download the really long tracks right now. Uh, what I'm really interested in are the ones that are down here. Um, I'm about to approach the keys and I want to get some for the keys. So um, the ones I'm really interested are, the one I'm interested in today is the Marine Stadium in Miami to Adams Key. I'm going to be anchoring near Marine Stadium and I want this route to get me to Adams Key. So uh, you'll see the link there and again this works for all of these. These blue things are all links. Um, I'm going to click that and what's going to happen is hopefully it's going to download it. might have to click it twice. Oh, there it is. Okay. And I can see uh, in my downloads folder, which is where it went, I have the folder open already and, and there it is. Um, what I like to do right from the get-go is change the name so I know what this really is. So it is Marine Stadium to Adams Key. And this will probably get truncated uh, when it gets into the GPS, but that's okay. Um, if you have downloaded one of the really long tracks, and you need to shorten that to get it into your GPS, you're going to need a software that will do that for you. I'm on a Mac and the one that I use, and you'll see it come up when I um, double click it, is one called GPX Editor. And this is an, a very, um, actually it might have been free, um, app that I can get for my Mac. Look for something like this. Um, the way you would do this then on this app is you would select a point where you wanted to break it, and then you would uh, tell the editor here, split the track. And that would create multiple tracks. And, and in all honesty, that's not what this video is about, so I'm not going into any more detail on that. What's neat though about GPS editing software like this is that you can actually see where the track goes. So yes, this is what I want. Okay, I'm gonna quit that. And now I've got this uh, downloaded file and I've renamed it and I'm going to copy it to an SD card, which I've already inserted in my computer. And I'm just gonna drag it onto that. And then you'll see it's right here. Uh, this Garmin folder is other stuff, don't worry about that. So you'll see it right there. From this point, I'm going to eject the SD card and then I'm going to bring it over to my uh, chart plotter and stick it in there. So I'll be on a different camera for that. Okay, so this is the helm, the inside helm on my Ranger Tug R29 uh, Command Bridge model. And it's got two chart plotters. Um, they're networked together, so it doesn't matter which one I turn on, they will both go on. And it's going to go through the warm up process. So the benefit of having all these chart plotters is that I also have lots of slots. And I just agreed on that one. Okay, so they're all together. This is showing you where I am and various magnifications. Um, so if I open up this little door, and you'll see that I've already got two cards in there. Uh, I don't wanna pull any of those out, so I'm just gonna go over this one. Again, they're networked together, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to push this card in, hopefully. Yep, there it goes. Sometimes I put them in upside down or try to. Okay, so it's in there right now. Um, it recognized that I just put a card in. And what I want to do is, I think I want to manage the card. Let's see if I get this right. So I want to merge from the card. Uh, it is, um, the port chart is the other side. So there's two, again, there's two of these. So the port chart one is the other side. And then this is the one I want. So I'm going to select that. And then I can 
decide which one I want. Now the one that starts with a dot and a dash, that's nothing. So just ignore that. And it might not even appear on your system if you've got a Windows system. This might be a Mac thing. Macs sometimes put these weird invisible files. Uh, that's not the one I want. The one I want is the one without the dot. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to tap merge from selected file and that's it. And go back, 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 back. So now if I want to see that it's definitely installed in there, um, and again, I could do this on any of my chart plotters, I go into Info, User Data, Tracks, because it's a track, Save Tracks, and we should see it in here. I got a bunch of them in here. Uh, actually, this is the one. That's interesting. It didn't change the name for me. I think I must have had to change it inside the file, but that's the one. And if I select that, I'm not sure if it'll let me just show it. No, I can edit it in here and I'll do all that. But here's where it's, it, uh, it uh, starts. It's right in here. This is it right here. So when I'm ready to go follow that track, and I will allow my, my boat's autopilot to actually follow a track, um, drive the boat for me, basically. Um, what I do is I, I get into here and I display the track, whatever. Let me just show you where like, I get, I pick it, then I pick follow track, and then I pick forward or backward, depending on which way the track goes. This track starts up by uh, Marine Stadium and goes to Adams Key. If it went the other way, but I was up by Marine Stadium, I would do backward. But normally I would do forward because I'm going to go from Marine Stadium down there. And of course, I'm not anywhere near there right now, so I wouldn't set it up now. But if I were, I would just pick forward. And then when it came up and asked me uh, to um, start the, the route, then I would just say yes, and it would uh, take control of the boat. Um, if I did not want to actually follow it, in other words, if I didn't want the boat to drive it, I could tell it to follow it, you know, forward. And then when it came up to ask me, do you want to uh, engage the autopilot? I would say uh, no or cancel. And it would still show me that line, uh, but it, and it would load it in, but it, I would not be following it. So uh, the autopilot would not be following it. So it's just there for reference then. And that's how it works. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about this uh, video, just leave a message in the comments and I will try to answer it either in the comments or in another video. If you have any requests for other videos that you want to see, again, comments, let me know. Uh, don't email me. I don't read email. Just uh, <laughs> enter it in the comments. If you like the channel, subscribe. Uh, make sure you read my blog. Um, it's called MyGreatLoopAdventure.com and it's uh, stories about and tips for traveling the Great Loop. That's it. Thank you. Bye.